Hello, everybody, and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Ash, and I'm joined by Dave. Hello. There he is. And today, we are here to talk to you all about Gotham Knights, which we are particularly excited for because we've just come back from Canada on a press trip to Warner Brothers Montreal to see the game in action and get a hands-on with it. Yeah, we had a fantastic time. Massive thank you to Warner Brothers for taking us out there. Uh, and a massive thank you to Canada for all the poutine. Yes. I mean, Canada, well done. Yeah, it's well so done. good. It's so good. But... That's not what we're here to talk about today. No. This video is aptly titled The Seven Ways Gotham Knights is Not an Arkham Game. And we're going to tell you what they are, jumping straight in with number one. This is a new take on Batman because Batman is dead. I must admit, I didn't realise this until we got to the studio and started playing the game. I knew that Batman wasn't in the game. I didn't realise that Batman was dead. You didn't realise Batman was dead? No, I just thought... Like, maybe he's on holiday or something. I don't know. Batman's got to have a holiday. He's on holiday to hell. And But he's dead. Yeah. And this is, like, such a huge thing. Obviously, it's, like, a, a huge part of the story, but it just if affects the entire world of the game, which I think is hugely interesting. Mm. Like, imagine a Gotham without Batman. Like, the two are completely inseparable in my limited understanding. Batman is dead. Gotham lives on yeah. without Batman. So do the villains. So do the Bat family. So do the police. The people of the, of the city. It's crazy, and it's this huge starting point, really, for, for everything. Not just the story, but the gameplay, like how you play, who you play as, how everybody reacts to you, what they think, what they want to do. It's just massive. Yeah, Batman and Gotham are like gravy and cheese, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's weird having one without the other. It's very but, true. Uh, this sets up the story for our four protagonists, which are Barbara Gordon's Batgirl, Dick Grayson's Nightwing, Tim Drake's Robin, and Jason Todd's Red Hood. And you play as these four characters interchangeably to kind of progress your story and deal with the aftermath of a Gotham without Batman. And they all have different ways that they play, different things that they do, they're fully fleshed out in their own journeys and dealing with Bruce Wayne's death and basically what that means to them. And it's just really, really an interesting point to start from because it's so new for like a Batman adjacent game to, yeah. to be without him. Um, it's just really exciting. Almost more interesting to me is actually how the villains feel about Batman being dead. I think like that's so interesting because Batman has always had this kind of mutual need um, with the with the villains, they kind of need each other. There's almost a respect, almost like a uh, they almost kind of like each other a bit. Mm, um, yeah. And so the way that they all react to to his loss, to him not being there, is extremely fertile ground for me for like interesting stories and, and character development but we're getting ahead of ourselves Ash what's number two number two is about the unique character journeys that our four protagonists go on because each of them has their own ascension to knighthood that kind of is the driving force of Gotham Knights you can play as your one character repeatedly or you can swap in and out at the Belfry in between missions in the day night cycle which is all night is patrolling and fighting crime and all day is chilling out in the Belfry so the Belfry is like their base of operations where the Bat family are hanging out planning the night's events with Alfred with Alfred Alfred is here Alfred has not died which I think is big news for everybody Good yeah, to know. Well, he's also a, like a, a Batman in the cheese and gravy combination like he's, the, he's chips. the chips he's the chips he's the chips yeah very much so he's really the bedrock that yeah. everything else is based around um, and yeah I think this four character system is extremely interesting I'm, I'm really excited to see how players use it whether they'll play the entire game as just one character whether they'll swap characters regularly um, that's really interesting to me and I'm not sure whether Warner Brothers know exactly how players are going to treat it whether they'll you know they'll see players doing playing the game four times through to see every part with uh, every character and these characters are they're not just reskins of the same sort of base character they're completely different they have yes. different move sets they have different m characteristics they have their own weapons they have their own powers their own approaches yeah it's it's like really quite incredible what they've done in terms of the amount of detail and characteristics that they have packed into these these characters um, they even have their own cinematics and like their own different interactions with with other characters in the world we played the first mission that features harley quinn and we played it as nightwing and nightwing and harley quinn have a relationship a prior existing relationship so they were chatting to each other because they knew each other um but then we saw the the cinematic with robin and robin has never met Harley Quinn before so they had a completely different interaction um, and that's just one cinematic you know in, in a game full of many mm -hmm. so who you play as is going to have a big impact on 
your version of Gotham Knights. Yeah, for sure. It, it's it's not quite four games in one, but it's four experiences in one. So whichever way you like to play is defined by your character. So you've got kind of stealth with Robin or kind of one-on-one typical Batman combat with Batgirl. You've got acrobatics and kind of kicking people in the head with Nightwing. And you've got kind of ranged weapons and more of like a tank build with Red Hood. So there's like a different choice of how you want to play with each of them. And then you get to experience their story individually as well and kind of again expand on their knighthood journey becoming the knight of gotham because one of them has to be you know the protector at the end of this it's up to you to choose who that is that's true and that is a lovely segue into point number three that the protector of gotham will be up against villains villains and as we touched on earlier this is a new era for villains it absolutely is because it's all about these kind of villains occupying a space that doesn't have batman in it anymore and the main person we looked at for this was harley quinn who we played the beginning of of her arc and the end of her arc and then there's lots of stuff that happens in the middle that we didn't get to see that is ex- exceptionally exciting because the beginning and the end are very different places wait a second this means the pets is dead for real seeing her growth and her change into this character that's very much she's not a sidekick she's not anything to do with joker she's her own person she's a bit older she's more mature she is way more unhinged like she's just harley that has come into her own and she is totally taking advantage of the lack of batman and realizing she can do whatever the hell she wants and nobody can really stop her obviously as the gotham knights you gotta try but like her whole vibe is is very chaotic very cool and a new kind of side to this character that we haven't really seen before and i think they told us a little bit more about kind of clayface and mr freeze as well and how their arcs are kind of affected by batman's loss whereas you know clayface is a man made of clay yes he is a man made of clay certainly his his face is his face is definitely very clay and Batman was kind of like an equal or someone that could help him despite being nemesis like he was someone that could help him so he's quite upset at his loss right yeah Clayface has lost the the one person in the world who might actually be able to help him and save him from his fate and now that is gone and you know so he's like (laughs) I thought you were going to say save him from his face (laughs) (laughs) so the gloves are off like there's you know in a world where there is no help for you anymore like well I can imagine he's not going to get any nicer no um and you know i think it's it is a super interesting point this is what we were saying at the start about batman being dead like my experience because i haven't read the comics my experience of batman is only through films and games and therefore my experience of all the villains in the universe is only in a world where batman exists and you know batman is a massive thorn in their side like a constant thing they have to think about and worry about and plan for and with batman being gone it must be like a a huge relief but then as we said they have very nuanced relationships there's probably some grieving as well it's weird and exciting and I I love that we're not just going to see these villains we know but with a different character design they're free of this big problem in their lives i.e. the Batman what are they going to do now I can't wait to find out yeah and I think the writing has been very focused on that and before we move on to our next point I should also say obviously the Court of Owls are in this which we know is happening but the studio and everyone there have been so tight lipped about it they are the Court of Owls themselves to be honest Um, and all we know is, is that Batman didn't know about them so it's kind of something totally new for this game and for your experience with these characters this is a really nice point to kind of jump in with to know that there's something that I don't need prior knowledge of not that you need prior knowledge of anything because I explain everything quite clearly as you go through but it's just a nice access point for the newbies isn't it like to be able to go there's this new thing it's really scary it is scary because it's quite horror themed and nobody knew about it Batman didn't know about it and the Gotham Knights are there trying to kind of face off against this new foe I think the fact that Batman didn't know about it is the most exciting part for me. Like a, a a society so secret and powerful that they could just subtly pull the strings without even Batman, the world's greatest detective. Even he didn't know about them. They were they were operating on such a high level and so subtly. That's so compelling. That's mm. so exciting. They're so evil. What are they up to? Also, the Court of Owls. Owls are the bat's natural predator, which is why they're called that. I, just I didn't know that. They told us that. I didn't listen to that bit. Okay, well, the, the owls are the bat's natural predator is why they're the court of owls, which I just think is a cool little that neat is, thing. That is a neat thing. That is nice. And moving on to another neat thing, 
Point number four is the momentum-based combat that you'll be fighting your enemies and villains with. Yeah, so uh, we're getting into some gameplay mechanics a little bit now. And obviously, combat was a huge part of the Arkham games. It's a huge part of uh, Gotham Knights as well. There's lots of ways, I think, that, that Gotham Knights um, separates itself from the Arkham games. Obviously... Um, each of the characters, as we said, has their own skill set and move set. They have their own weapons, which is very different to, to Batman and the Arkham games. The biggest difference, I think, is the momentum system. And the momentum system is basically a bar that you fill up through attacking, well-timed attacks uh, and perfect dodges will score you more momentum. And when that bar is full, you unlock kind of like a, a suite of momentum moves. They're like they're basically special moves that are individual to each character and obviously, you know, open up the opportunities for like a whole different range of attacks. So there were some that were like area of effect things. Uh, Nightwing has like a, a buffing zone, so he will buff um, teammates if you're playing co-op. We'll come on to that. And he will like debuff enemies. I think with fear which is always, it's a classic, isn't it? I love the, the fear debuff. Yeah. Like, oh, God. Oh, I don't want to fight him. Um, so it, this is like the momentum system. At first, it just feels like a special move, I guess, because you only have one and you're playing with one specific character. But as you get further into the game, we, were, we had a save later in the game so we could see there are many moves that you can unlock. It becomes like a big tactical part of the combat because sometimes your aim in combat will be to to fill up that momentum bar so you can unleash one of those moves because you're facing a character that's particularly tough or particularly requires a certain style of play. I love that. I love that the combat, it, it, even with our short time with it, I could see how kind of thoughtful it was. I found myself taking my time with it, not just rushing in and button mashing. Mm. Uh, although I'm sure you could definitely do that. I was really enjoying kind of like thinking a little bit, trying to fill the momentum bar, like encouraging attacks so I could do perfect dodges, that kind of thing. Um, and I think the momentum system is just really smart. And I, uh, uh, that, that extra layer of like tactical thinking will be um, a pleasure to many players, I think. I liked seeing uh, Nightwing just jump on people's heads. That's yeah. his special move, his acrobatic. So he just jumps on heads and like, pew, it's really good. Yeah. It's just satisfying. You would, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, if you were an acrobat, I, I definitely would. I would. Next up, we have point number five, which is the open world Gotham, which we've kind of spoken about a little bit, about Gotham being this, this place that's devoid of Batman and has changed in the wake of that. But it is built upon five districts there's five different areas on the different founding families of gotham and they have all of these iconic areas iconic landmarks the things that you know from batman and love from batman yeah i think you know gotham is definitely something that players are going to be the most excited to see and explore that first moment when we came out of the belfry and sat on a um the rooftop and looked out over gotham it's absolutely stunning and it does um, set itself apart from the Arkham version of this, not just because of its size and because of these different districts that are, you know that you can visit, but I think just visually, the color palette is oh, it's so it's so gorgeous. They've got like this kind of purple take on night. It's actually incredibly inviting. Like their their use of neon lights is amazing. Their use of um, like steam and smoke around the lights is amazing. It makes everywhere so interesting and um, I'm excited to explore it. I want to go and look at things. Um, I want to patrol, which is important because if I hated Gotham, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, screw you, Gotham. Just look after yourselves. In fact, boring technical thing, which isn't boring at all, is that we spoke to the, uh, one of the art directors yes, who this told isn't us boring. every single light in the game has been I was loaded up with this fact. It's Sorry. not boring. No, I know. I, just, I was just uh, underplaying it. It's so cool. Every single light in the game has been placed by hand. Um, and... When you think about an open world, how many lights there are in that world, that is no small undertaking. And you have to appreciate that there are systems in games where you don't need to do that, where you can sort of like just copy and paste, you know, or just have the same lighting over there and the same lighting over there, to a degree at least. But every light has been hand placed by an artist for a reason, you know, for an effect, to make it look as inviting or cool or spooky or scary or whatever they're trying to achieve as possible. Um, and I think that really uh, comes through. It's just beautiful and inviting. And it looks amazing in technical speak, 4K 30, which... Uh, that's what we played it in. That's what we played it in. That's yeah. what you'll be playing on PS5 with glorious ray tracing. Oh, my God, the we ray tracing was so We are talking about raindrops on uh, spandex... <gasps> uh, or PVC. I'm not too I don't sure. Know, maybe what, leather. Do I don't they, know. What do they use these days? I don't know. Don't know. You know. Have don't you, know. Maybe it's that spray-on fabric, like in 
fashion week anyway that's getting off topic because another thing to add about the open world gotham is the wonderful way you can traverse it which is on the bat cycle which is just cool it's just very cool you're on a bat cycle you can wheelie whenever you want yeah i mean the wheelie button is yeah that's when you knew you were onto something good there yeah there's you, literally just a button to wheelie and that's all you want that's all you want to do i wheelie the whole that's way around all, in fact a developer had to come and tell ash like <laughs> The R2 is, is accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> because you're you just wheelie. wheelieing, just like, I don't need to accelerate <laughs> when I'm wheelieing. Come on now. Oh, it was really good. But you can unlock personal traversal options for your characters as well. So Nightwing has a Nightwing. He uh, certainly does. <laughs> which yes, is like that makes sense. a big paraglider that you can kind of hold on to. And Red Hood has spectral platforms, which you can ding off, which are kind of like ghostly apparitions that push him back in the air. Yeah. It's very, very cool. I'm excited to see more of Red Hood's story. I'm not very familiar with the character and I mean he died mm. and then came back to life and now he has very moody. mysterious kind of powers and is slightly in touch with another place. Um, that's very cool to me. And uh, we should just say that every character, I think, has a grappling hook as well. So yep. it's not all just the personalised uh, traversal. And, yeah, getting around the city is a big part of it, obviously. Like, you want you need to be able to get around this massive place. And um, there is also fast travel that will be unlocked, but we didn't see that. What we did see, though, was two-player co-op, point number six. Yes. Which means you can get someone else in and you can play the whole game in two-player co-op through an online connection. Yeah, so we only uh, played a, a specific sort of mission um, in co-op, so it had a very defined start and end. We didn't get to see patrols or anything like that in co-op, but I think it's hugely exciting. It's just a nice thing to do, isn't it? It's It felt very cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously I was playing in a slightly unusual situation at, at a studio with a developer, but planning our like moves, planning how we were going to go in and do stuff. This isn't new for co-op really, but it was, it was new for a Batman game, and it was really, really fun. Obviously in Arkham... Uh, night you could team up for little moments with uh, AI controlled heroes but playing with a friend patrolling together deciding where to go around Gotham how to tackle things when to tackle things and just splitting up as well just being in the same world and then just going your separate ways coming back together I think it just opens up the possibilities for like um, uh, just a whole new gameplay experience like a very role play experience I think it's going to be really really cool and when you come to understand these characters better and their move sets better people are going to learn how to fight together mm. effectively you know how their skills can combine well and why to do that there are kind of like co-op takedowns that you can do which we did do a little bit I want to see more of those and I want to see how yeah like how these different skill sets can be combined to be the most effective things like what's the ultimate team yes I think I think it's really interesting that you can both play as the same character and that's kind of like a throwaway thing that you don't have to pick between two different ones so you could have two Batgirls but because of the like customization of the costumes which have like different colorways and different things you can unlock for them in customization as well as all the different moves you can unlock and the different momentum skills you can prioritize like you could you can have two completely different Batgirls working together on the same game which I just think is really nice it like usually nice. with these things you'd have to pick between if one was Batgirl one would be you know one of the other three heroes um, but this is a uniquely collaborative game as well as one that makes the individual kind of paramount so you can have separate versions of things and it doesn't feel weird or unnatural to who they are and like at the end of the day these four characters are working together the whole way through the game it's, it's a four character game these four characters are going through this experience together they're constantly talking to each other on their little bat phones like they're just living their lives in Gotham together and you're playing as them whichever one you choose as you go through but it's it's their story together it is the Gotham Knights yeah and I think it's worth saying as well that the whole game has been designed right from the start of the process with co-op in mind which I think is a, a cool detail yeah it's nice that they were always thinking about how this can be an experience for just more than the single player like yeah. it's it's for everyone um, but we're going to move on to our last point now which is number seven you are the world's greatest detective protege nice yeah yeah um, you are a detective your whole thrust of this game is figuring things out using clues but the best part is that you can get things wrong it's not straight away clear what it is yeah and I think you know obviously being a detective was a big part of the Arkham games I know you haven't played the mash and and there are things that are prevalent in Gotham Knights like the the bat scanner the yes. bat scanner um, the bat scanner, <laughs> scanner um, like AR kind of vision but this felt like distinct to me this kind of having a an area of clues and trying to figure out what you're supposed to do with them and like you say 
getting things wrong like that felt very different to me and I think I'm excited to see more of that within the game. We talked about how on patrol you get clues that then lead you to the knowledge of bigger crimes that are happening around the city. Um, we didn't see that in action. I'm really excited to see how that works. Um, and also within the Belfry, which we can't show you, there's a an evidence board which is tracking, I guess, the, the overall story of the game. Um, so detection as you say it's a real prevalent game mechanic and we've seen lots of different takes on it in the short time we had with the game and i'm excited to see more of those as well yeah and that is everything about the gotham knights that we have to talk about today i haven't done my impression of a batman villain yet so i'm going to do that now please it's da bat <laughs> <laughs> and now we may oh. end the video oh good oh thank god we got that in there um <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let us know in the comments below if you're looking forward to Gotham Knights. Who will you be playing as? Who will you be teaming up with? What's your dream team? Uh, do like this video if you liked it, and subscribe so you don't miss anything else from the world of PlayStation. Woo! Goodbye! PlayStation.